Organic gardening and growing herbs, fruits, and vegetables without chemical inputs is nothing new. In fact, the concept of using synthetic supplementation on a food crop is a far more modern construct. Supporting the soil and giving it the ability to sustain vegetation is how the cycle is actually designed to work. When something goes wrong in that process, i.e. intensive agriculture, then we've decided that the best way to fix this is to add chemicals. And this is what starts that vicious cycle of destroying that life process and furthering the need for even more intensive chemicals and so on and so on. So using parts of my garden as an example, I wanna show you that modern organic backyard farming can be done successfully without the need for harmful or expensive chemicals. And it starts right now. Right off the bat, I have a disclaimer. What we're discussing here today doesn't really apply to pots, containers, or raised beds with enclosed bottoms. These type of growing situations are what we call closed systems and will eventually need supplementation to continue, organic or chemical. Everything that a plant needs to grow is contained in the soil, or at least it should be. Even hardcore intensive crops like corn, when the soil profile isn't damaged or disrupted, can be sustained. And it's been this way for thousands of years. Several things changed in the way that we farmed that broke the system, that closed cycle of healthy production. First, we started to grow massive monocultures of single crops, wheat, corn, soybeans, etc. By only growing a single crop that extracts a single specific profile of nutrients out of the soil, and then never returning those nutrients back in the form of spent foliage, a massive void is created for those very nutrients. Solution? Well, add that nutrient profile back in chemically. There's that vicious cycle we talked about. The second reason that modern agriculture changed the way that we look at soil is automation, specifically machinery. In a matter of hours, acre after acre of soil can be tilled, rotivated, exposed and destroyed. What was once done by hand and then done by animals on a small scale is now being done by mega machines with devastating effects. Exposed soil loses moisture infinitely more rapid than soil that's not. And the more we irrigate our crops because of exposed soil, the more we dilute the nutrients. The solution once again to that is to add more chemicals. And so you can see that modern agriculture is this vicious cycle of damaging the soil, harvesting the crop, adding chemicals, tilling the field, damaging the soil, adding harmful chemicals. It never ends. And that industrial clockwork has found its way into our backyard gardens, not because it was fulfilling a need, but because of money. Retail fertilizer sales are huge and they've never been better. The most common question I get outside of how much do I water is what kind and what strength of fertilizer do I use? These companies have done their job. It's ingrained in our culture of growing, even at the backyard level. So how do we solve this? How do we grow without the need for any synthetic inputs? Well, after gardening for the last 14 years this way, I've recognized three easy strategies that we can readily implement to grow the most amazing crops naturally. Let's just dig right into this by, well, not digging. The first way that you can set up your backyard garden to be a self-sufficient machine, machine, self, 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 machine, self-sufficient machine is to stop digging. Don't till, don't rotivate, and outside of digging up your potatoes and beets, don't disturb the soil. Sowing plants, weeding, and harvesting can all be done without even touching that top layer of soil one iota. Sheet mulching can assist you with the weeding and the sowing of new crops, and the planting of transplants can easily be done right where the old crop existed, without missing a beet. 
you'll find that as you've done a few no-till crops, that it's actually easier and far less labor intensive than traditional planting with all the tilling and digging, you know, and it's actually more effective. The second strategy that we can implement is to use soil amendments. When we plant up our new transplants or when we sow new rows of seeds, this is the absolute perfect time to add a new layer of compost to our beds and plots or at the very least, some supercharged potting and seeding mixtures that are filled with natural slow releasing amendments such as alfalfa meal, canola meal, and even rock dust. Fortify that top layer of soil and watch your crops respond quicker and faster with production that's second to none. Which brings us to our final strategy, and that's to cover all exposed soils. You guessed it, mulching. Successful, self-sufficient gardening always comes back to mulching. By covering up that precious top layer of soil with an organic mulch, we prevent both excessive evaporation as well as the excessive need to top water. The less that we can water means the less that our soils get continually washed of the nutrients that it's trying to hold on to for our plants. The world's biggest crop, a forest, mulches every second of every day for this very reason. When you think about it, a plant's life cycle is designed for it to be self-mulching. Even an evergreen perennial will always be dropping leaves or needles to continuously cover up that top layer of soil. That drop foliage is also designed to shed valuable nutrients back into the soil as those leaves break down. You can do this too at home using shredded leaves, and grass, and even the spent crops themselves. There's more than enough nutrients in this foliage to grow the next generation of crops. Awesome stuff. There you go. Hopefully today I've shown you why chemical fertilizers are not only not necessary, but also possibly damaging, and part of a vicious cycle of synthetic dependence that we simply should be avoiding in our backyard organic gardens. Hopefully you guys too are well on your way to achieving chemical independence in your backyard gardens. Hey, if you have any fertilizing experiences or any experience with no-till farming, share it in the comments down below. Also, if any of you are on Facebook, head on over and join our gardening group called Growing Better. The group has grown phenomenally fast, yet it will never lose its sense of community or its welcoming feel. If you're passionate about growing epic organic fruits, herbs, and veggies for you and your family, the Growing Better group is a great place to hang out, share, learn, and grow. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next video.